Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. In the uh, previous presentation, we have talked about the importance of the failure analysis and in this one, we will try to see the different aspects related to the failure analysis like when to consider a component has failed and what are what has been the major failures in the history of the civilization which has led to the uh, death of the so many people. So, we will be starting with the many uh, engineering disasters. Uh, these engineering disasters has uh, uh, led to the uh, significant loss of the life and the property and uh, which uh, happened primarily uh, due to the few regions. For example, uh, like uh, uh, an engineering failure leading to the engineering disaster uh, might uh, happen due to the like say the design flaws in the component which is failing or uh, uh, the material failures like the material which uh, has been used for fabrication of those components were not fit for uh, those uh, service conditions and applications or insufficient knowledge means the kind of service conditions which will actually happen during the service were not properly forecast uh, and uh, therefore, it uh, resulted in the deficient design and uh, uh, maybe under estimation. Uh, under estimations related with the service conditions or uh, the severity of the service conditions also uh, might lead to the engineering failures and uh, maybe uh, due to the carelessness and negligence of the uh, those which are involved in design or the fabrication of the components or uh, those which uh, are there in service and maintenance of the components their negligence and careless carelessness can also lead to the engineering failures and which can appear in form of the big engineering disasters and uh, these uh, engineering disasters we will see there uh, have been few uh, very big uh, engineering disasters in form of like say a titanic ship failure. Uh, this was one uh, in this titanic ship uh, ship failure, uh, this failure occurred as you can see in uh, 1912. Uh, this uh, uh, failure of the ship uh, led to the uh, loss of the life of more than 1500 people and uh, this failure primarily occurred uh, due to the failure of the rivets. Uh, this had more than 300 million uh, rivets to join the different plates of the ship and in this uh, um, the uh, ship these rivets which were there uh, it was found that their impact resistance uh, was very poor and uh, when the ship uh, hit the iceberg that impact led to the fracture of the rivets and that fracture led to the, um, uh, the suppression uh, of the different plates and that uh, finally, led to the uh, sinking of the uh, ship. So, if, if you see the details of this Titanic was a British passenger ship that sank after the hitting an iceberg and this happened in April uh, 1912 and led to the loss of more than 1500 loss of the life of more than 1500 people. And as we can see the several rivets of the 300 uh, million rivet, 3 million rivets that held Titanic together were recently uh, recovered and tested means uh, the cause which was uh, found uh, for the failure of the ship uh, was uh, the poor impact resistance of the um, uh, of those uh, rivets uh, due to the low quality iron which was used. And another problem which was uh, uh, observed in design of the Titanic ship was that there were 16 uh, watertight compartments uh, which were separated all uh, uh, which were separated from each other, but all of them uh, were uh, connected near the ceiling and this uh, enabled the water to spill from one compartment to the another and finally, led to the sinking of the boat. So, this uh, uh, was one of the big uh, 
the failure uh, engineering failure or engineering disaster which primarily happened due to the poor impact resistance of the rivets as well as poor design of the ship wherein there were 16 different compartments all were in, uh, interconnected at the ceiling. So, when the water um, filling is started then this led to the filling of the uh, water from one compartment to another in sequence and finally, the sinking of the ship had happened which led to the loss of uh, uh, life of more than 1500 people. Then there is another uh, 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 case, uh, this is what has been explained with the help of this uh, diagram wherein like uh, the iron under the low temperature conditions loses its uh, toughness and uh, this particular temperature at which loss of toughness uh, is observed is called ductile to brittle transition temperature and here we can see the toughness as we know we measure in terms of the energy absorbed and energy absorbed reduces with the reduction in temperature. For most of the steel this duct, um, uh, temperature is about minus 20 to minus 30 degree centigrade for most of the mild steel and structural steels uh, while uh, for alloy steels especially by adding nickel and other elements uh, this can be reduced further so that there is no significant loss a loss of the toughness. So, basically the when the material uh, uh, is subjected to the higher temperature conditions like room temperature and above uh, it has a fairly good ductility and it becomes brittle when it is exposed to the low temperature conditions. So, basically uh, the iron rivets which were used uh, had the low toughness under the low temperature conditions especially when it uh, hit the iceberg and that led to the fracture of the rivets and uh, uh, which led to the separation of the ship also. Uh, another uh, big uh, uh, disaster engineering disaster was the St. Francis Dam. Uh, this dam was uh, constructed uh, in 1926. Uh, to supply the water to the Los Angeles city and this was uh, very close to the Los Angeles about 60 miles from uh, 40 miles from the Los Angeles into, there is a famous Canva, Canon um, hills where it was constructed and this uh, figure shows the dam constructed on the Canon, Canyon hills. Uh, which was about 40 miles from the Los Angeles. It is about 20 to 15 uh, uh, kilometer from the Las Vegas and on uh, March 12, 1928 just uh, after few hours of the inspection by the relevant engineers uh, uh, the dam failed and that resulted in very high uh, water waves and killing as many as 1600 people. Uh, this has been one of the worst disasters in the American civil engineering disasters history. So, this is the kind of the residual and uh, the left out structures were there. Uh, the, the structure which was like this uh, before uh, the failure of the dam uh, and after that uh, all this structure was damaged uh, and uh, this uh, was the left out structure uh, after the uh, disaster and uh, the whole of the water led to the uh, high water waves and that led to the killing of the many people. And uh, then there is uh, another uh, 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 accident uh, which happened again in uh, USA uh, around 1940. This is uh, called a Tacoma narrow bridge collapse. Uh, this was the uh, third uh, world's third longest suspension bridge. Uh, in terms of the uh, span length and the, that uh, bridge used to flutter under the influence of the air. So, under the conditions on the uh, of the wind velocity of 40 mile per hour, this was fluttering to such an extent that uh, it uh, collapsed and this collapse was uh, um, caught in the camera also and the main cause of the failure was the aero elastic flutter that is a dynamic instability of an el elastic structure. So, this flutter was recorded in camera and what uh, was seen uh, in this form here now uh, this led to the collapse of the bridge. So, this uh, the flutter we can uh, easily see under the influence of uh, the air uh, or the wind uh, it was fluttering up and down and this uh, under the extreme conditions led to the collapse uh, of the bridge. 
Uh, then uh, there are three more disasters which uh, took uh, which are here in uh, um, India. One is a Kadalundi train disaster here uh, the, when the train was passing over the river, um, the bridge on the river had a number of piers. So, one of the pier had settled down causing the internal stresses uh, in the rails. So, when the train was passing the track snapped, the track railway track snapped and the train was derailed which eventually landed into the river. And um, so, in this case basically the testing was not uh, carried out and um, uh, the, 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 the pier, uh, uh, one of the pier had settled which caused uh, the lot of stress, internal stresses to the track. Uh, especially when the train was passing. So, the, the train was uh, got derailed and uh, it landed eventually into the uh, river. So, it is important that uh, um, never use a structure of high importance without testing and always uh, keep an eye uh, on its uh, uh, integrity and the safety and it needs to be tested first before being used. Uh, then uh, the Bhopal disaster was the another uh, 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 big disaster which uh, had happened uh, in the Indian history uh, and uh, it happened in uh, 1984 wherein toxic gas uh, uh, released at the Union Carbide Pesticide Plant in the Bhopal that resulted in death of more than 2,259 people immediately and as a whole. Uh, even after that also as a whole about 11,000 people died as a result of this disaster. And in this case what had happened like uh, the methyl isocyanate uh, which is highly toxic and irritant material this got contaminated with water which resulted in exothermic reaction and uh, exothermic reaction increased the generated heat and which in turn increased the temperature inside the tank over 1200 degree, uh, 200 degree centigrade which was much beyond its capacity and because of uh, this increased temperature conditions automated emergency release system kicked in venting the extra pressure and a large volume of the uh, poisonous gases were released uh, and that uh, those gases uh, spread all around the nearby area. The, uh, the another problem was that had the gas been lighter one it would have uh, reduced the, um, the extent of adverse effect it had. So, uh, say, but the gas was uh, heavier than air. So, it settled down um, at the lower levels and that uh, affected uh, the people more badly and that uh, led to the loss of more uh, life. So, the gas, uh, gas leak uh, called uh, caused more than um, 5 lakhs uh, uh, injuries uh, including uh, 38,000 temporal uh, temporary and partial injuries and permanent uh, disabilities of more than 3,900 uh, people. So, uh, this was one of the biggest disaster of the Indian uh, uh, history uh, that led uh, that was also because of the some technical issues related with the uh, the production and uh, the, the, this just schematically shows the union carbide plant where this uh, disaster took place and uh, the kind of uh, the effect which it had and where the plant was located. Uh, then there is one uh, example of the Rafi Ganj rail, uh, rail bridge uh, here also uh, it was uh, the failure was blamed to the poor design and construction. Uh, and the low maintenance conditions and it is said that the plate girder deteriorated over a period of time which led to the loss of the strength um, in fatigue due to the vibrations from the train and, uh, the, and uh, this was uh, 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 left unattended and, um, uh, and uh, over a period of the service this bridge was also uh, rusted this all which are in turn also reduce the strength. So, when the train was passing the plate uh, uh, of the girder gave up leading to the fatal crash and uh, uh, because of this uh, it was learned because of this after this accident it was learned that uh, make sure that your design is checked against the fatigue and the steel is coated for the corrosion. So, uh, for the Rafi Ganj uh, rail bridge accident two causes were identified mainly one was the corrosion of the steel plate girders uh, and uh, another one was the fatigue. So, uh, due to the vibrations the, the fatigue 
the crack for nucleated and fatigue reduce the strength and uh, means load carrying capacity and which eventually uh, under the loading conditions led to the catastrophic uh, failure. So, it is important that uh, anti corrosion um, paints are made and uh, the, the designs are checked for the uh, fatigue loading conditions. So, uh, these were the some of the failures which uh, uh, happened internationally and uh, the nationally and uh, these underline the need of uh, looking into the technical aspects to see in which way uh, what should be done in order to avoid the recurrence of the such kind of failures because whenever such kind of failures occur they will be leading to the huge loss of the life, property, reliability and um, uh, very adversely uh, affect the um, uh, the public as a whole. So, failure of the engineering components frequently leads to the disruption to the services and uh, therefore, it is important that the primary factors causing the failure are uh, established and so that uh, uh, in light of the causes suitable recommendations can be made so that their uh, failures or uh, their recurrence can be avoided. So, to avoid the recurrence uh, reoccurrence of the failure of the engineering component during the service suitable recommendations must be made. Yeah. So, now we will uh, try to understand uh, that uh, uh, for the failure analysis what we need to do and when to consider that the product has failed or not. So, for this purpose uh, as I have said the failure analysis is a systematic approach of the investigation primarily to identify the fundamental causes or the primary causes of the failure uh, so that the corrective action can be taken. But for uh, uh, investigation uh, in which direction investigation should be uh, for that purpose we need to uh, understand the two uh, um, two important things uh, uh, to see in which way we should uh, move for the failure analysis. One is we need to understand systematically what are the fundamental sources of the failure. All these will provide us the clues, the directions which should be looked into uh, to explore the possibility of the uh, failure. Uh, that these uh, sources might have contributed towards the failure. So, fundamental sources of failure, this is one thing. So, we need to understand systematically what are the various sources which can cause the failure of the component. So, this is one thing. And another is what is the general procedure for the failure analysis? General procedure, procedure of failure analysis. There is there is few general things which needs to be uh, uh, which need to be seen uh, in the failure analysis and that sequence is to be followed, but not necessarily always that uh, that sequence will be followed uh, as per the finding of the one stage uh, will uh, decide that in which direction we need to move for the uh, investigation. So, general procedure of the analysis it is basically about the, the general steps uh, which are used for the failure analysis. Uh, since there uh, can be a series of the uh, fundamental uh, causes which uh, fundamental sources which can cause the failure of the component. So, all these need to be uh, understood systematically. So, this is what is needed to have the proper failure analysis. Uh, when to consider that a component has failed for that purpose, uh, we need to uh, see uh, uh, there are three conditions which are considered uh, uh, as uh, the situations when we can say that a component has failed. So, failure when to consider that a component has failed. There are three situations one is that the component is inoperable. The second is the component or the product operates product operates, but does not does not give the intended results or we can say uh, intended function is not being performed by the product. So, it operates, but uh, uh, the desired results are being not uh, given. 
and the third is uh, the component operates but reliability safety is compromised so we would like not to we would not like to use the component when the comp, uh, this compromised so these are the three situations like uh, we switch on the fan uh, switch but the fan doesn't uh, uh, run so that is one or we use a pen a pen is being used so but it is not writing so that is the inoperable situation uh, we switch on the car but car is not starting that is the inoperation and the second or we are uh, switch on we uh, we have switched on the turning lathe uh, mas uh, lathe machine but machine is not operating the second case is uh, we switch on the fan but the fan rotates at very low speed and it doesn't give the air that is expected or uh, we switch on the lathe machine machining is being done that is fine but it doesn't give the required surface finish it doesn't give the required dimensions so that is another case the system operates but it doesn't give the uh, desired results or it doesn't perform the intended function uh, like cutting tool is cutting the material but it, it is uh, it, it is giving the surface which is too rough for any use third situation is where the component operates but the reliability is compromised so if it is leading to the uh, uh, risk to the life of the proper uh, life and the property then of course the components need not to be used in that case even if it operates um, uh, but uh, reliability and the safety is compromised then also we will consider that no components need to be um, uh, looked into and it should be um, investigated to see um, uh, what has led to the failure of the component. So, these are the three situations where uh, which are very generic in nature and it can be applicable for any kind of uh, uh, the failure of the any kind of mechanical components. So, the component does not operate or it is inoperable, it operates but uh, does not give the desired results or does not perform the intended function or it operates but the reliability and the safety is badly compromised. So, these are the three situations when we can say that the component has failed. So, this is what uh, has been uh, explained in the uh, presentation also like the component is inoperable operates but does not perform the intended function and operates but the reliability and the safety is poor or th that is compromised. So, uh, uh, what are the different ways by which the failure of the mechanical component or the metallic uh, components take place. So, the mechanical components failure. Uh, there are four cut broad categories by which the mechanical components can fail. The number one here uh, like the material uh, what is the meaning of mechanical component that there is a component made of the normally made of the metal uh, it can be made of the wood and the plastics and other things also, but it is subjected to the external load for given function. So, some loading is there and the component has to work under the given loading conditions. So, under the loading conditions if it deforms elastically deforms elastically beyond the limit then we will say that okay, the component has failed elastically component does not work elast means because the deformation elastic deformation is beyond the limit. So, uh, we can say unacceptable elastic deformation, unacceptable elastic deformation. This is the typical case where like what we consider automotive shafts. What we want that elastic deformation of the shaft is very less. Uh, if it is more than it will adversely affect the opening and closing of the walls due to the improper uh, position of the cam which is used for uh, uh, operation of the uh, uh, opening and closing of the walls. 
So, uh, similarly for other applications where elastic deformation is leading to the, the misplacement uh, or mispositioning of the components then it will be leading to the improper functioning of the, uh, the machine systems and leading which in turn will be leading to the malfunctioning or improper uh, operation of the system as a whole. So, if the component deforms elastically beyond the acceptable limit then we consider that the component has failed or it does not work. The second is uh, the plastic deformation when the when the under the influence of the external loads during the service if uh, the component deforms plastically means it experiences the permanent change in dimensions shape then that will be leading to the plastic deformation. So, we can say unacceptable, unacceptable plastic deformation beyond the limit. Maybe marginal uh, plastic deformation is ok, uh, but uh, if uh, there are certain limits and the conditions for a smooth functioning of the component, if the dimensions go beyond those limits, then we will say that component has failed by the plastic uh, deformation. Third is that complete fracture. Under the external load conditions, if the loading goes beyond the limit, then component can fail either in the inductile fracture, brittle fracture, under the fatigue conditions, creep conditions. So, there can be different things. So, there can be like say the ductile fracture, brittle, fatigue or the creep. So, these are the different ways by which failure of the component can take place. So, here like the here the stresses has to be more than the yield strength limit or the deformation beyond this uh, acceptable limit can also happen due to the creep. So, here this is called a stress rupture where suppression or the fracture occurs the fatigue it is catastrophic in nature this brittle fracture is also catastrophic and we get the some indications in case of the ductile fractures that you no know, yes the component has started to deform and after some time it will fail. So, this is the third category by which the mechanical uh, the failure of the mechanical component can take place. The, the fourth one is where the loss of dimensions beyond acceptable limits, acceptable limits like this primarily happened due to the wear and tear uh, which can be like adhesion, abrasion, corrosion, erosion extra are the mechanisms which are working onto the a mechanical component and uh, that is leading to the loss of dimensions and sometimes we find that no that the dimensions of the component has lost so much that the dimensions have reduced and they are not able to take the load or the service conditions anymore and that will be uh, leading to the, the failure of the component. So, these are the four ways by which failure of the mechanical component normally occur elastic deformation, plastic deformation and uh, the suppression or the fracture and uh, that loss of the dimensions beyond the acceptable limit due to the wear, tear etcetera. Now, so this is what we can see in uh, the presentation elastic uh, deformation is beyond the acceptable limit, excessive and unacceptable level of the plastic deformation, complete fracture and the loss of dimensions due to variety of regions which are primarily related like uh, adhesion, abrasion, erosion, corrosion etcetera. Now, you will see uh, this is the typical case of the elastic deformation where uh, during the operation the, the torque is transmitted uh, from the engine to the uh, uh, through the crankshaft uh, to the uh, eventually to the wheels of the uh, automobile and uh, uh, here uh, the due to the transmission of the torque uh, elastic deformation of the uh, shaft will be taking place and if this elastic deformation is beyond the acceptable limit, uh, then it will be leading to the malfunctioning of the walls and that will adversely affect the, uh, the functioning of the automobile or engine. Uh, another is a plastic deformation where due to the excessive loading when the stresses go beyond the acceptable uh, beyond the yield strength level, then it will lead to the uh, we, uh, this is what we can say here, it will lead to the deformation. So, here these gear teeth have been subjected to the 
the, the teeth on the shaft have been uh, uh, subjected to the greater than the uh, elastic uh, strength and that has led to the uh, sorry plastic uh, yield strength and that has led to the uh, the plastic deformation and a similar kind of the deformation we can see here uh, where uh, the, the, the gear teeth have been subjected to the uh, the plastic deformation and here the twisting in a particular direction is showing that it has been subjected to the uh, torsional kind of the loading. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, we can see here also like this sp spiral feature indicates that uh, the component has deformed plastically under the torque conditions or the twisting load conditions. Then another failure is where uh, the creep takes place. Uh, the creep is a phenomena uh, like uh, this is a, uh, the tube having some wall thickness or uh, like say in case of the boilers no? and here we have high temperature and high pressure. So, uh, under the creep conditions uh, means the metal will be experiencing the the stresses due to the pressure and the high temperature also. So, under the uh, constant uh, pressure conditions also when the component is subjected to the subjected to the high temperature as a function of time we find that there is a continuous plastic deformation. So, initially there is elastic deformation and then it is subjected to the plastic deformation like this. So, a strain being experienced by the pipe will keep on increasing as a function of time and as a result of this there may be uh, localized bulging or increase in uh, diameter or um, increase in thinning of the pipes. So, uh, all these things will be leading to the uh, eventually the bursting of the pipes. So, this is what, uh, this is what uh, uh, can be seen here in these tubes. Uh, due to the continuous creep and uh, the thinning of the walls that will be leading to the, uh, the fracture uh, and the suppression. This is the stress rupture conditions and uh, the uh, due to the overloading or uh, due to the overloading you can say these are the gear teeth if they are the, the gear is subjected to the uh, overloading then the fracture of the teeth can take place this kind of fracture. Uh, of course, uh, normally it is a fatigue in nature where crack will first nucleate and then it will grow uh, gradually during the service and uh, uh, ultimately it will be leading to the suppression or catastrophic uh, failure of the gear teeth. So, uh, uh, now this is uh, the kind of wear where loss of dimensions uh, take place. So, this wear can be there in different forms in the case of gas turbines like uh, the high temperature in case of the gas turbines they will be working under the high temperature conditions and if the hard particles are, uh, are striking to the surface of the, uh, the turbine uh, blades then they will be causing the erosion. Similarly, in hydro turbines if the silt is coming along with the water then it will be causing the the loss of the material from the turbine blades and uh, the erosion of the material from the surface and that will lead into the loss of the material as well as lo loss of shape of the, the turbine blades and the guide vanes. So, uh, this kind of, uh, so this is an, an example of the uh, loss of uh, the failure of the components due to the wear. In the earlier case, we have seen the failure of the component like the gear uh, due to the fracture and here in one of the case what we have seen the failure of the tubes due to the creep and uh, the failure of the, the shaft due to the plastic deformation where change in uh, size and shape takes place due to the excessive loading beyond the yield strength limit and uh, uh, this is the case of the elastic deformation if the crack uh, the shafts are subjected to the uh, greater uh, if, if the uh, elastic strength of the material is poor and the crankshafts are not properly designed using the suitable material of the required rigidity then it will be leading to the el greater elastic uh, deformation. So, uh, if you have to analyze these four fundamental uh, uh, four uh, ways by which failure of the mechanical component can take place then we need to see uh, what kind of the physical evidences we need to collect and uh, 
uh, what uh, we should look into uh, so that uh, the potential causes of the failure can be explored. So, now we need to see uh, what are the fundamental uh, causes that will lead to the failure of the mechanical components. So, these we can categorize in four groups one is the design, second is the material, third is the service, uh, sorry, the third is the uh, manufacturing, and fourth is the service conditions for which these are exposed. I will talk in detail about these fundamental causes uh, and the factors which can lead to the failure of the mechanical component. So, here I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the few uh, big engineering disasters which have taken place internationally as well as in India and uh, when we consider that as a component has failed and uh, what are the uh, fundamental causes which lead to the uh, failure of the component. Thank you for your attention.